And I think we're live. Uh, welcome everyone, we are on pre-show. Uh, if you do, don't want to watch the pre-show, uh, I will have a timeline down below so you can skip to the exact timeline uh, that you're actually after. Uh, so welcome, we are a day late though. I had a winning I had to do yesterday. Um, so unfortunately, like I couldn't do a live yesterday. Uh, so I thought I would uh, pop in and do one today with you all so I didn't miss uh, another week. Um, great wedding yesterday, it was really good. Uh, the weather wasn't too hot, which was nice. It was only around about 26 Celsius, I think, 27, which was lovely for the day. So it turned out beautiful. It was in a really uh, gorgeous old uh, property. Uh, so it was really nice. Can't wait to share uh, can't wait to share some of those uh, images. In fact, the groom uh, came from the US. He's married an Australian girl. I think they're still deciding where to live yet, uh, over here or over there. Um, but it was really great. So we had a, a few Americans over as well. Uh, so it was fantastic. So uh, I can't wait to show you those images. Today we're going to go through some interesting, uh, well, a few interesting rumors as well. Uh, so we have got some news stories that we can talk about today, but we're on pre-show at the moment. So I'm just going to see who's here and we can have a live chat. Um, it is a Corona day. Uh, I'll show you the um, Vegas bottle opener here. Uh, I'm going to be there in around about a few weeks. Uh, not long now. I think it's only about three weeks until we're in the US, so stay tuned. <laughs> uh, we will be having meetups, so if you did want to join us, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be calling out some meetups on the fly as well, but there's also some that are planned. So if you did want to join us, uh, cheers by the way. Um, if you did want to join us, uh, join the photography videography school. I will put that link down below um, so you can uh, join that and, and sort of keep up to date with what we're organizing. But we're organizing some shoots around Santa Monica, uh, Vegas, um, all through the desert area around there as well. Uh, and uh, then we're heading up to Yosemite and um, San Francisco. So you're welcome to join us on any of the shoots. Uh, so just let us know, basically. So we'd love to see you. So let's see what people are saying here anyway. Um, heroes here, flippy screen here, we're gonna talk about that. That's an interesting rumor. <clears throat> just bought the A6600. Now Fuji wants to come out with an X-T4. Well, it was pretty obvious Fuji were going to come out with an X-T4 fairly soon. Uh, and I think it will have IBIS this time. I think they left that out deliberately to give you an upgrade to the X-T4 uh, from the X-T3. So I think they had to leave some things out and IBIS was probably one of them. Um, so that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, and Sony wants to come out with an A7 IV with a flippy screen. And now I want to sell my A6600. Well, Stan, just wait and see what happens first. Look, this is always the case when you buy a new camera. Uh, something, you know, better comes out. <coughs> Excuse me. Casper was asking why his boss title went, and I said to him that's because he was naughty and arguing in the group. So he's been a naughty boy. <laughs> and he's carrying on about it. I love it. Um... What else? Jake said, I'm trying to decide between my Sigma 105 1.4 or the Sony 135 1.8. Which would you guys pick up? Uh, I have the 85 1.4 already, um, and I shoot primarily weddings uh, and two A7R4s. Well, I suppose if you're looking at it, that the 85 is closer to the 105 than 135. So it, in your case, Jake, I'd probably go for the 135. I adored the 105 f1.4. I thought that was just an incredible lens. Um, but I probably still think that my favorite lens in that focal length is a 135. And indeed, I used it yesterday a number of times, and it's gorgeous. Um, so I probably, if I was you, I would have the 135. And that gives you that difference between the 85 and the 135. Whereas the 105, obviously, is a lot closer to that. So. Um, you already have the 85 1.4, that's why I get the 135. Um, DS Greg said, uh, two likes. I know, I, I've got two, uh, 12 likes now and two thumbs down. Um, is that, that's a fan club, yeah, I love it. Um, what else have we got? Chris said, hello David, nice day in Los Angeles after the rain. Great day for a corona. It certainly is, cheers. Uh, John saying good day as well. Uh, MJ saying hello, cheers. 
Are you meeting us when we come to LA, Chris? Um, John said, an A7 IV with the flippy screen, <laughs> will end camera conspiracies. I know that would be interesting. I'd have to, if that happens, I'll have to have Casey on to have a chat about that. Um, George said, hello again. Uh, New Jersey is back in the house. Um, Jamie's here as well. DS Greg said, uh, the memo said, every day is a Corona day. I love it. James said, what's up from Houston? Uh, looking to see you at WPPI. That'd be great, James. Uh, Jamie said, hello, everyone from the uh, now very wet northern New South Wales. Hope you get the same uh, down your way, David. Yeah, we haven't had much rain at all, but they're predicting some on uh, Monday, I think, so hopefully we'll get something. Um, John said, good morning. Uh, Bill said, hi, David, I'm having a brandy to warm up. Well, there's the time. Um, what else have we got? Um, it's funny because you guys in, uh, you know, the America and Europe are the total opposite times to us with weather. So it's interesting, completely opposite seasons. Um, Dan said, hey, David, I'm glad you agree that the A9 is still relevant. Oh, it certainly is. Uh, the, look, the A9 is incredible. Like I said, in fact, I'm not going to be upgrading. So I really enjoyed using the A9 and, and it is a beautiful camera. Like I said, if if ergonomics mean everything to you, well, then the A9 is, is a good upgrade because it is better ergonomically than what uh, the A9 is. Uh, and like I said in the in the um, review, that if you had the A7R4, you understand what I'm saying. The buttons are better and things like that. You've got two fast uh, card slots. It's just the performance of the camera to me wasn't that much different. Now it might be if you're a you know a, a bird photographer, wildlife, or if you're a sports shooter, there may be enough of a difference in the AF to justify that purchase. But for me. For what I do, and I can tell you, I, I push things extreme when I do dancing and things like that, where the girls are, are running and jumping and things like that. I just didn't find the upgrade to be worthwhile for me. Uh, but obviously, if you're a sports shooter, um, things like that, and you want the networking that's involved in that camera, well, then it is a definite upgrade. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping that I can hold out until the A9 III comes out, and that might be the one that I jump over, because I probably think that the A9 III will have a, a global shutter. Um, I think that the A9 III, the next one, mechanical shutter will be gone. I, I, this is what I believe anyway. I, I think the A3, A9 III will have uh, no mechanical shutter at all because I think by then it, it won't be uh, even useful. Um, global shutter will solve the problems with the flash sync speed. Um, so I think that's probably what's gonna happen. So that's why at this stage, it's just not, it is, a, a, it is an upgrade, yes, but it's not a big enough upgrade for me to justify spending that money. In fact, I still adore the A9, and when I've, ha now, I've now had the ability to use the A9 and the A9 II side by side for a month, so it wasn't like I just used it for a week or a day or so. I used it for a full month in many shoots, um, and I, I just didn't find that it was a big enough upgrade for me, particularly with the AF, because I think... We were blessed with what Sony gave us with the uh, version 6 firmware uh, or version 5 and 6 firmware with the A9 that that camera was so good. Uh, and it probably has hurt a little bit their sales with the A9 too because a lot of people may feel like I feel that the current A9 is good enough. Um, and I certainly can't justify upgrading to it. The, the money I'd prefer to, to say buy a lens or go on a holiday or something like that, that um, rather than get an incremental upgrade for me, which is what it is. If you're a sports shooter, I know people said in the comments that they you know, they shoot wildlife and birds and stuff like that, that they noticed a difference. But I, I tested it extensively and really, it was so close that yes, it was, and I mentioned that it was a fraction better, but it wasn't better, it wasn't enough for me to think, wow, I'd like to go out and buy a whole new camera. Uh, like I think we're blessed with the A9. And in fact, uh, you know, I think the A9 at the moment is an incredible bargain. And, and if you're thinking about um, getting that camera or jumping to the A9, if you're sort of tossing between the two, you may want to get the A9 and then get a, a, a G Master lens or something like that with the money that you save. So it's interesting to see what how you go about it. But look, they're both fantastic cameras. If, if you have a use for the A9 II, you'll know that you have a use for the A9 II. I certainly don't. Uh, and I do push the camera though. So, yeah. Anyway. 
John also said, guys, we're just in pre-show too. I'm, I know we're a fraction over, but I uh, just want to go through questions with people before we start the show. There will be a timeline down below if you don't want to watch all of this. Um, where were we? Uh, John said, keep your Corona. <laughs> Get a good bottle of Villa. At, what's that, Antoni? Toscana. I've never had that before. Oh, because you're posh, I love it. Gerald, good day, Gerald. Good to see you in here. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Hopefully, you're safe now and the um, all the shaking stopped. Uh, Aaron missed the show we did just this week again because of the uh, earthquakes. Uh, he missed the behind the photo show due to the earthquakes that he's having and power issues and everything else. Um, <laughs> Casper said he didn't even go to the principal office yet. Um, Aaron said electric is all out around my town, but I'm not. But not here. Oh, that's fantastic, Aaron. So at least you've still got power there. Gerald said, I love my 135 GM even better than my 85 GM and my 70 to 200. I agree with you. I haven't touched my 70 to 200 really since I got that lens. That is how good that lens is. Um, Sigma announced. I know I'm going to talk about that one. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Sigma 70 to 200. Tim said, On the road to Adelaide listening, go for four hours. Keep me awake. I love it, Tim. Uh, Avon said, hello, David. G'day, mate. How are you? Dave said, hi from Indy. Um, I wish I could join you in Vegas. Yeah, it'd be great. I'm really looking forward to meeting a lot of people over in Vegas and uh, LA and things. Hello from Japan. Uh, is it Sikito? MJ says, uh, about to get a dump of snow here. Wow, well, that's fantastic. Uh, we certainly don't get that here, that's for sure. Or we could use it here. Uh, going to meet you on one of your many adventures when you're in Los Angeles. That's great, Chris. Um, Ali says, apparently Sony will skip naming the A7S3 and call it the A7S4. Who knows? That could be a possibility, Ali. Um, Hector, hi there from New Jersey. What about the new light, Pulsi Buff Link 800 Watt, strong LED light for video? Yeah, I haven't even looked at that yet, Hector. I don't think you can buy Pulsi Buff stuff here in Australia, so it doesn't interest me, but it certainly might interest you if you're in a market where you can buy that, um, that light, I mean, I'm heavily invested in pro photos, so, but I do look at other things that are out there. I mean, I, I'm aware of Paul C. Buff and also Godox and other things, uh, but I haven't looked at it because like I said, you just can't get that here in Australia. They, they haven't got any representation here in Australia at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, I might have a read of it just to see what it was about. Um, Juzy said, uh, hi David, uh, as said, greetings from South Arizona. G'day Ike, how are you? Um, John says, any comment on the rumoured Canon R Mark II? Well, I think, uh, John, it's, it's, uh, I've just got to get back to where that was. Um, I hate it when it jumps like that. Uh, I think the high-res version is just going to be announced sometime this year. Now, well, look, uh, Canon is definitely, I believe, going to uh, announce some form of uh, Canon ESR Mark II this year. Uh, whether it's called the Mark III or something. I mean, who knows what they're going to call it. But uh, I think there's probably no doubt that it will be out sometime this year. Now, whether they do two of them, whether there's a, a lower-ended model with dual card slots and things like that to replace the current ESR, and then they may have an R version above that, we keep hearing rumours about a 70 megapixel one. I think Canon will want to jump back in and, and probably try and one-up Sony to beat their A7R4. Uh, uh, so it's just a matter of time. Um, Ars says, greetings from South Arizona. Um, I'm late too. I'm not sure. What that, oh, you're just saying you're late. Aldrich said, hey, everyone. G'day, Aldrich. Good to see you in here. Peter said, A74 going to be 2500 with a flippy screen, 10 bit, 4K60, and A73 drops to 1700. Interesting. I'm going to talk about that camera uh, in the second story. So stay tuned for when we go through that story soon. I'm just getting through uh, introductions there. Um, noticing a difference, uh, noticing a difference and being worth an upgrade are two different things. Exactly, Ike. It just wasn't worth the difference to me because it just wasn't substantial enough. Uh, to the point where often I'd be just photographing, I'd grab two, I'd grab the A9, then I'd grab the A9 II, photograph one after the other, and I really could not tell the difference. You know, like, it, like I said, it might be a fraction stickier in, in tracking, but it's not like I've ever thought the A9 needs to be any better. So 
That's why I'm thinking I'm probably gonna wait for the A9 III. Unless my camera breaks or something, well then that might be an issue. But even then I may buy an A9 because uh, of how cheap they are at the moment. I shouldn't say cheap, but how reasonable they are at the moment. Um, John said, uh, what if I wanted full frame camera on the inexpensive? Would the A7 work for portraiture? The price is so compelling. I wouldn't buy an A7, uh, John, no. Uh, the focus and stuff like that in that camera is just not good enough now when you're looking at what the other cameras have got. Uh, if I was, if I only had that sort of money, I, I would probably be trying to get something like an A7000. I know you're saying you want full frame, but um, I'd, I'd be probably looking at you know an A6400 or something like that, that that would have much better focusing, a better camera overall. Uh, that really is going back in technology now, so I wouldn't buy an A7 now. Um, Hi people, been asked to shoot some pictures at a funeral next week, thinking of just taking the Tamron 17 to 28 and the 28 to 75, with the a7 III also have the uh, 85 1.8. That's a great lens setup. That that would certainly cover you because I, I could shoot weddings with that. Um, so you wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Uh, just worried that uh, what shooting in manual would you recommend shooting AP or I, I wouldn't you I wouldn't shoot manual. Why would you want to shoot manual if you've got an a7 III? Oh, do you mean uh, instead of, uh, oh, okay, aperture mode. Now, I always shoot manual. I always shoot manual. I like to be in control. Um, so I, I, the only time I ever shoot in aperture mode is if I have to move incredibly quickly, say going from inside the church, which is very dark, and then immediately run outside when the bride and groom come outside the church, and you haven't got the time to be playing around with... Um, uh, all of your settings. So I'll usually use aperture priority in that situation. Uh, my wife loves aperture priority, so she uses aperture all the time, but I shoot totally manual. Um, I like to be in control of what's going on. And that's even including not using auto ISO and things like that. I like to be controlling the ISO as well. Um, <laughs> two thumbs down. Yeah, I know, I love it. Um, if Sony has a flippy screen, I'll trade my a7 III for the a7 IV. Definitely. Interesting. Casper um, said Sony is holding on to something big. Maybe, Casper. Um, um, what else have we got? We're just about down there now. So Cliff's saying hi. Um, and that's about it. All right, so let's get started. So let me put in the... T oh, I forgot to press the time on this. Ah. Uh, hate that. Now I'll have to go through a manual. Oh, well, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, how long are we in? Um, just let me check. So we're 17 minutes. So let me start this and I'll just add 17 minutes onto it. Start stopwatch. So let me add 18 minutes. All right, so I'll just add 18 minutes onto the time. So I'll put down 18 on here for the show starts. Okay, so let's get started on the show, uh, and we'll go from there, so bear with me. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our usual show. When I say usual uh, show, I uh, I was I normally do yesterday, but I had um, a wedding to do yesterday, so uh, I couldn't come on today. So I thought I'd actually uh, pop on today. Now, just why I remember the girl that you just saw at the end of that um, the intro that I just showed, Rebecca. Uh, I'm going to be doing a pin-up shoot with her tomorrow. We're actually going to a, a hamburger place. Uh, in Melbourne that, that looks like the old Happy Days type thing. I think it's called Happy Days. 
Um, so we're going to go there tomorrow and I'm going to do a pin-up shoot. So she's got this whole pin-up outfit that she's going to be able to uh, put on and hopefully we can do some amazing shoots. I'll film this. But the interesting thing, guys, for anyone local is we're going to uh, do a workshop with, with Rebecca uh, and I'm going to, uh, it's going to be a pin-up workshop. So if you are interested in doing that with us, um, stay tuned for information because we, we're just going to film it tomorrow uh, just so we can use it as a bit of advertising and things like that for the workshop. Uh, and then we're going to do it in the same location. So the great thing is, I'm going to itch your nose. Uh, the great thing is if you're trying to build your portfolio and you'd like something a bit different, uh, Rebecca's going to come with these amazing outfits and stuff like that. And Rebecca's gorgeous. Uh, and we're going to have this whole workshop done inside uh, this old... Um, hamburger place that we can make amazing things like with milkshakes and hamburgers and all this sort of stuff with a doing thing so i can't wait to do it so stay tuned so it is going to be a great workshop that's going to happen soon uh we'll once we get this bit done uh, tomorrow uh, then we'll start thinking about what when we're going to do it what dates we're going to do it it probably will be just after i come back from the us um so stay tuned for that. So you will have a bit of notice about doing it, but it will be a fantastic workshop. So stay tuned. The other thing too is um, Firetech just sent me this gimbal as well. Uh, this is the G6. Uh, I can't wait to try this. I tried it yesterday um, with uh, the uh, A6400. It will take an A7 III, believe it or not, uh, but it's tiny. Look at the size of this little thing. It'll take mobile phones. Um, gimbal, like DJI uh, cameras, stuff like that. It has all these different attachments that you can use. Um, so stay tuned. Thank you for Firetech for sending me this. So stay tuned for the review on that. Uh, you know I have a thing about gimbals. Um, but this is probably going to be the gimbal that I take to the US because it's so small. Uh, this is going to be a great travel gimbal. Uh, so I think this might be what I bring to the US with me. Um, but stay tuned for that review anyway. Um, Apart from that, uh, I should have another review up soon with me shooting with the A9 II with Kiara. Uh, that'll be coming up fairly soon as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, coming up in the coming days. Um, so apart from that, let's get started on the uh, news stories. So let's go to the first story. Um, what time are we on? Four? Twelve. And then I've got to add 18 to everything. All right, so let's go over here. Now I wanted to show this because there was a firmware update, guys, uh, that came through um, just the other day. I think it was on um, Thursday this came through and I upgraded my uh, 1.4 GM and also the 135 GM uh, lenses. But there was also an update to the A9 uh, camera system as well. Uh, I didn't have that problem uh, that it's talking about. That It's saying that it had random times of turning off when looking back through raw images. Uh, and improves the JPEG image quality when shooting under certain uh, unspecified conditions. And they always uh, give you updates that they don't list. It usually says uh, in, uh, performance improvements or something like that. So there is an A92 upgrade as well. Uh, but there was uh, two upgrades to the lenses, the 24 1.4 and the 35 1.8. I did do both of those upgrades before the wedding uh, because I wanted to see if there was any difference uh, in how they worked. Um, and there was one big difference uh, that the update gave me was that um, there is something in it that it says here, uh, and I'll explain what this is. Uh, it says the updates, both of the updates for the 1.4 GM and, and the uh, 135GM were the same. Uh, they improved aperture response when the lenses are attached to the Sony A9 uh, and the A92 and the A7R4. Uh, camera systems as well as the ability to select focus priority from the aperture drive in the AF menu when attached to the Sony A9 system uh, camera. So I thought I'd ch uh, test it yesterday to see how it went. Now I'm not sure whether it focuses any quicker uh, so I didn't notice that aspect of it but what I did notice is there's something in there called the aperture drive in AF menu um, and what this does it's really cool because if you're, say, shooting in a low-light environment and you don't want to shoot wide open, uh, you know, a lot of you might be shooting with flash or you could be shooting with, uh, you want to get more uh, more depth of field. What it will do, say, for instance, you're shooting at f4 or even higher. Say, say for instance, you're shooting at f8. Well, what it will do is it 
initially shows it dark in the EVF, but then what the lens does, it stops down to the uh, to 1.4. So for a, a second or, or two seconds or whatever, it opens up to the full aperture and then it helps with focus. So if you're dealing with trying to focus in low light scenarios, having that feature now working with the 24GM and the 135GM is great. Before it was blanked out, so you couldn't use it. Um, so now it does give you that ability to be able to do that. Um, I shouldn't say flash actually because it has to be an electronic shutter. But there may be a time where you're adding lights in and things like that and you want more depth of field in the background and you don't want to shoot wide open uh, to get decent AF. Well, you don't have to do that now uh, because it will just open up the second it tries to get exposure. So it, it, it's, it's sort of dark in the EVF, then it opens up and you can see and it grabs focus and then it goes black again or darker again. Uh, so it's a great feature to add. So I do recommend if you've got the 24GM or the 135GM that you do upgrade the firmware uh, to those as well. So it seems like it was really good. That's all I wanted to mention on that. Um, like I said, I haven't got the A92, so I can't tell you if there's any improvements on that now because I've sent that back to Sony. Um, all right, so we're going to keep going anyway because we're going to go up to this next story, which is the Sony A7 uh, IV. Um, and what are we on? Seven, I'll just put it as eight. All right, so the next story uh, is this. Now, this is Interesting, because I can't believe this is true. Now, they've said, this This was in Sony Alpha Rumors this morning, I noticed, um, and it says that um, it's going to have, the A7 IV is going to have an articulating rear screen, and this is just a photoshopped image uh, that they've put in here. Um, but what what's weird about this, and I hope this is not the case, I mean, I'd love to get an articulating screen, but it says down here that uh, the only A7, the Sony A7 IV has an articulating screen, spec the same as the 3, no improvement, more like a basic model for vloggers. Um, I can't believe that could be true, unless they're going to have two versions of this, one just specifically for vloggers, where they've got the fold-out rear screen, uh, and then they may produce another A7 IV or whatever, a higher spec one. I don't think that Sony would just release this with a fold-out rear screen. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but oh, I should have brought the handle up too. I need to bring that up for you because I need to talk about that handle. Uh, before I forget that, let me stay uh, here, guys. Just go in the chat for a second. I just want to open up that Sony handle because I want to talk about that as well because it's a bit relevant. Uh, let me just go to here. Sony. Let me see if I can find it. Um, vertical series. I've got to try and find it now. I'm after this handle uh, that came through the other day. Shooting grip, no. Let me go to Sony Alpha Rumors. It's probably there. Because it might be relative to that or, or related to that. So let me just see if I can find where this grip is. Uh, still not there, not there. Oh, here it is. All right. So let me just come back to you for a second because I this is sort of interesting and it may relate to what we're talking about here. So this was the handle that Sony have released the other day. It's the Sony GP VP2 Bluetooth handle. All right, and you'll look down here that um, it's meant to be for vloggers and, and people like that, and they're showing it with A7 series type cameras. All right, so to me, if this is the case, Having this type of handle, it's like the mini one that I have for the A6400. I've got the similar handle for this, uh, for the A6400. But if you're looking at something like this and they're going to promote vlogging, it's not cheap either. I mean, it's $139, so $140. Um, there'd have to be a way that if you were going to use um, a uh, A7 series camera, that, that it has to have a flip up screen. Because if they're talking about vloggers, you've got to be able to face it frontwards to you to see what you're doing. And that this is the way that they're touting this, is it's a vlogging type thing. So for this is why I wanted to mention that, because looking at it, 
it needs a front uh, a fold out facing screen, but I'm not convinced that we're gonna get one this way. I would probably be more convinced if it was a flip up screen like what we've got with the A6400. The only thing is with the, uh, with the EVF being much more pronounced out the back, I'm not sure how they would do it. There's gonna have to be some intricate system to bring that LCD out and then take it over the top of what the camera is. So it's, it's interesting to see what they will do. It's just that I just can't believe Sony all of a sudden are going to give out as a flip out screen. And I'll come to the chat soon to, to see too whether you think this is, is real or whether you think it's just a rumor uh, or whatever. But I think there's probably more chance that they're going to give us one that will flip up uh, and somehow with, you know, I don't know, some mechanism that will come out and then flip up like the A7, A6400 does. I'd be absolutely wrapped if they did bring one that would fold out to the side like that. Um, but I'm just not convinced with the way the Sony cameras are uh, that if it flipped out on the side, um, you know, how are you going to be able to access all of these sort of things here? Like on this side, for instance, just let me open this up. On this side, this is where you attach things like your headphone speakers. It's also where you attach your HDMI ports and things like that. Now, if you have a screen that folds out, I'm not 100% certain you're gonna be able to get anything into these ports. So um, I'm not sure about this in the same body. If, if the body was designed slightly different, I probably would believe it more. Like I said, that's why I think we may get an option of having it fold up. They just have to work out some way of getting over this clearance of the, uh, the EVF at the back. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, and then they talk about in here, uh, that the specs will say the same and it's just a vlogger's version of this. And I do believe Sony may do something because of the way they've brought that handle out. And I'll talk about the handle in a minute. Um, but um, I, I do still think that there's gonna be upgrades in this camera. And the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, of the fact that when the a7 III came out, it was way ahead of anything at its time. At the moment, it, it's as good as anything that's out there, but it's not way ahead of anything at its time now. So. I think they need to do something extra now, like they need to give, do something with the sensor, perhaps give a little bit more dynamic range, a little bit better in noise, ISO. Um, they, they could certainly give us something better in video, uh, and you never know, they may do that on that camera. And I've sort of said it might be the camera that they give us a, a 4K60 in uh, for a short period of time, and then the A7S III would have a longer or better bit depths and things like that. But I still think there will be upgrades in the specs on this camera. Obviously, it will have the real-time tracking, so I couldn't believe that they would bring out a camera that would just have the fold-out screen and then they'd leave it at that. I just don't believe that would be the case, but who knows? I mean, you never know what Sony's going to do. So anyway, cheers. Um, so that's interesting. Now... Before we come to the live chat, I'll just talk to you about this handle. Um, I mean, it seems to be, I've got the one for the A6400, um, and I don't use it. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, look, it's, it's okay if you want to um, sit it down on a desk, but then you can get a much cheaper, just a tripod stand or something like that. Uh, the thing I wanted to talk about here, and this is why I often shoot myself in the foot with Sony, don't I? But anyway, the, the thing is that, with this, you bet I believe, honestly, if you're gonna do this, you're better off, and I'm not sponsored by Firetech, you could get anything, any gimbal. If you want to get better footage out of a, uh, a, a camera that has IBIS like what Sony has, you need something like this. If you are hand-holding uh, any of those cameras in video, um, doing a vlog with them, the footage is gonna be as shaky as anything. So. My recommendation really is to buy something like this. Uh, and I think that's probably way more the way, uh, the better way to go than to say get something like um, this. Now, if you've got money to burn, it might be useful. Like I said, I've got one for the A6400, uh, but I just don't use it. I mean, I probably should even sell it, but I, I found that, um, remember the, I the A6400 hasn't got IBIS, so that's one thing, that's why I prefer to put that on there. But even when I'm hand-holding any of the Sony cameras in video, uh, they're still a little bit shaky, um, and it's not something that I'd like the quality. That's why I'm saying I think you're better off really to buy something like a gimbal uh, in this uh, uh, sort of scenario. 
Uh, the other thing too is it's Bluetooth, so it will drain your battery a little bit faster. That's one thing that you also have to be wary of. Um, it would have been, I think it would have been a bit better if it had the lead to plug into your camera like the one from the Sony I've got. Uh, the, the one for the A6400 has a little cable that connects in so you don't have to use that Bluetooth because the Bluetooth will definitely drain your battery a bit quicker. But anyway, let me know what you think. I mean, it does look awesome. I mean, it, it's a nice looking handle. It's got great design. It's got that typical Sony look about it that's really nice. Uh, I just don't think I'd be using it for vlogging and stuff like that. I'd be saving the money or I wouldn't save the money. I'd just buy a gimbal. Um, but anyway, that's my uh, that's my choice about that. But let's go back over the, to the chat because I'd like to see what people are saying. Um... Uh, I'll start from around here, I think. Uh, people are talking about um, ISO, and a lot are saying they use auto ISO. And that's right, some love it. Uh, and like I said, I set uh, Kerry's up to auto ISO. She's using aperture exposure, and she uses auto ISO, uh, and it's fine. I just like to be in control of everything I do. Um, so I don't put anything on auto. I do everything manual. But that's my choice as a photographer um, I like to be com in complete control, but, but that's me. Um, Sony a7 IV with an articulating screen and 32 megapixel. Um, what else have we got? James said, uh, I mostly do Windows. Oh, they're talking to each other. That's okay. Um, John said, what's a good app to start learning video, David? DaVinci, uh, Corel, Premiere Elements. Um, John, I'm, I'm on a Mac. Uh, are you, obviously, you're on a PC, are you? Uh, looking at Corel. Um, like I said, I've always used iMovie, I'd say, for Mac site. I, I can't help you with Windows because I've never really been a Windows user. Uh, so I've always been on the Mac side. And I've always used, uh, I started with iMovie and then I went into Final Cut. So I've always been a Final Cut I did try Premiere for a while, um, but I found that if you're on the Mac side of things, Final Cut is so much faster uh, with things like rendering and doing everything really than what Premiere is. So I've stuck with Final Cut. Uh, it just seems to work better on the Macs. If you're on Windows, obviously then I'd say Premiere, but Premiere is a big program, so I can't recommend uh, what would be an easy one to learn on Windows. Uh, someone may be able to ch uh, chime in on the live chat. Uh, Gerald said, yes, updated the 24GM and the 135, didn't have any issues. Um, Kipo said, has said DaVinci, so there you go. JB Strobe is here, g'day mate, how are you? Um, Kipano said, a surprise doesn't give us a, a more bump, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> um, John said, a learning curve with Premiere, familiar with Lightroom uh, Photoshop to a degree. That's interesting. Anthony said, I just purchased a camera A7 III from Amazon over the holidays. Uh, I can still return it, should I? Look, it's hard to say, Anthony. You, look, there's rumors going around that, that there'll be an A7 IV released uh, soon. But we've been saying that forever with the A7S III, haven't we? So you, you can't go by that. Now, if that camera meets your needs now, and it, it's an amazing camera, if you find that that camera meets your needs now, well, I, I would possibly hold it but if you're not in any hurry and you could sort of wait a few weeks well then it might be worthwhile to return it and see if they release an a7 IV. It's always hard if you're on that penny you know that sort of change over time uh, where they're going to possibly re release a new camera. Um, I mean they're talking about the a7 IV is, is going to be announced sometime in February but, the, the, but they are rumours so we don't know so it's a it's a tough one. Um, Uh, what else have we got? What's the better lens? Uh, the Sony uh, 35 1.8 or the Zeiss Batis 40 f2? I haven't tried the Zeiss Batis, uh, Tim. Uh, I have tried the Sony 35 1.8 and it's amazing. Um, so I can't comment more than that. Uh, which way you'd want to go. I mean, I, I probably, if, if, if I was just choosing those without testing either of them, 
I would go for the 35, only because I, I like the wider aperture a little bit more. The, the 50, the 40 is getting a little bit close to the 50 for my liking, so I'd get the 35 if that was me, just for the sake of having the 35. Uh, and that is a gorgeous lens, the uh, 35 1.8, but yeah, someone might be able to chime in in the chat. Um... What else? Am I the only person that doesn't like articulating screen? Well, the good thing is that if you don't like the articulating screen, the beauty of this is, okay. The beauty of this is, if you don't like a screen that even comes out like that, all right, just say if this is an articulating screen that comes across this way, guess what? You can just go like that. Don't use it. it it's that simple and this is what I always tell people. Why do you worry about it having an articulating screen? If you don't want an articulating screen, keep it closed. Dead simple. It's like other things that I say to people. There's lots of features in the camera that you don't use. That's fine, just don't use it. But other people may use it, and that's a benefit of having extra features inside a camera. Like we've been talking in here that uh, uh, others were saying they love auto uh, ISO. Uh, so that feature's there, but for me, I don't like it, so I don't use it. Uh, this is the beauty of cameras where you can do things the way you want it, you know, set a camera up the way you want it. We all want different things, but if it had an articulating screen, that's fantastic. If you don't want to use it, just leave it closed. Uh, uh, what else have we got? Aaron said they won't make a full frame cam just for vloggers. Yeah, I, I don't know if they will either, Aaron. I mean, if they did, it would really hurt the A6000 series. Uh, I mean, that's one of the selling points now for the A6000 series is that ability to flip up the screen. Um, so, you know, that that's one benefit of that. Uh, then remember, you're talking about the A7 III at the moment is very similarly priced to the A6600, isn't it? They're, they're almost identical in price. Sometimes, in fact, you can find the a7 III cheaper. So if they did give a vlogging camera in the a7000 series, what would that do to the a6000 series? And I'm not sure Sony will do that for that reason, but you know, let me know in the chat what you think. Um... John said, uh, I wish my 5D Mark III had one. Great for low and high angles. Yes, it certainly is. Um, seems a bit of a stretch for me too, Aaron. Yeah, I don't think it will happen either. I think that's a rumour that I don't think will uh, happen. Fruple said, uh, isn't, uh, isn't it that I don't like the articulating screen? It's just that I don't ever use that feature. I don't think I've ever moved my screen since I own the A7R2. And there you go. You just don't have to use it if you don't want it. Um, what else have we got? Pick is a young David. What's that? Where's that? Did I miss one? I don't know what that was. Langston says, I'm not too fussed about the screen, but I'm not also a vlogger. Uh, Carl said, Sony already has a great articulating screen like the A99. Yes, and it does. And I, I wonder why they've never brought that over. It, it's interesting, isn't it, when you look at that? Uh, Julian says, I would love an articulating screen. Photomix says, the A7 III with a flip out screen. It uh, doesn't sound like a bad idea. It would be the ultimate YouTube camera. There are a lot of content creators who haven't switched over from Canon yet. And I agree, Ike, it would be. It would be like the ultimate camera. I just don't think we'll get it, though. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Langston says, I may have been conditioned to use a monitor. Um, if the A7 III has a flip-out screen, the Everything Man would have never switched. Yeah, true, because he did say that was one of the main features between them. Um, between the, uh, the that CNI and the built-in monitoring, Langston's using that uh, as well. Uh, I mean, I just would love just to be able to say, grab my A7 III and flip it out to the side, uh, side and have a, to be able to see myself. I mean, I really like the A6400's implementation now. I really like that fold-up screen now. Now that I'm used to it, it makes sense to me. And that makes way more sense uh, if you're looking at that type of uh, handle. If you're dealing with this type of handle, it makes more sense because if you had a fold-out screen that was coming out through here, it would unbalance it and it probably would fall over. But if it had the screen that went above it, 
uh, that wouldn't happen. But of course, then you lose that ability to have that mic on board on the top like that, uh, particularly the Sony one, because it needs those pins uh, to work. So it, it's hard to know which way they'll go. That's why I'm not sure they'll change it from the A6000 uh, series. I think we're just going to see it in the A6400, etc. Um, he did also say the glass uh, made the change too. Yes, you're correct. Um, where are we? Julian said, never use the auto ISO. Maybe I'll give it a go. Yeah, just try it, Julian. You might find you love it. Um, <clears throat> Jamie says, uh, Premiere Pro is great if you want tons of tutorials and plugins, etc. Um, Photomex said, I've got 100 United States dollars that, so, that say Sony will announce the A7 IV between now and WPPI. I think it's coming soon, Ike. We just don't know, though. Um, but you may be right. I mean, it's due, that's for sure. Um, or the A7S III. I don't think we're going to see that yet for a while. Um, just let me see if any other questions. Doug said, David, how do you like the 17 to 28 Tamron? It's a fantastic lens. That is an amazing lens. Um, Aaron said, I agree with you, David, on the flip screen. Tim said, David, if you had the choice, would you get the Sony 35 1.8? Well, oh, I read that. I mentioned that before. Yep. Yeah. I don't know whether it's jumping all over the place because sometimes it just jumps. Um, I'm going to move on in a second. Uh, Photomix says, yeah, people think that if manufacturers don't include the features that they wanted, the camera would be cheaper. But the trick is they include those features to justify the price that was intended. Exactly. And remember, like I said, if you don't want that feature that's in that camera, just close it. Don't use it. If you don't want to flip out screen, just keep it closed. It's that simple. Um, it's easy. Um... Ike also said, uh, just because you don't want video in a camera doesn't mean that it was going to save you $500. The price was the price with or without the 4K. Um, G'day, Long Rider. Good to see you in here. Um, John said, uh, Z50Z6, why not? If the screen can flip out up and down reverse. Not sure what that was talking about. Um... Altrick says, I have the 135 1.8 and love it. Yeah, it's an amazing lens. It really is. Um, Kelby said, do you think, or Kelb said, do you think the next EOS R will have 4K60? Yes, I do. Uh, yes, I definitely do. All right, so let's keep moving on uh, to the next story. So let me put down here, we're going to talk about the Tamron. So we're 29. Oh. 29, 15. All right, so next story is talking about the Tamron uh, 20mm. Now, this lens is, they've now got a release date, apparently. So the Tamron 20, uh, they're saying 2.8 macro. Now, I'm not sure, is it is it a macro? No, it's a 1 to 2. So it's the same as the other Tamron lenses. Uh, they're saying in here that it's going to be $350. Uh, and also, it's going to be uh, released on uh, the 30th of January, it's saying. Um, and there's a, I'll, look, I'll leave all the, these links down below so you can have a look at, at what they're saying about it. They're all the close focusing primes. Does this say how close this can focus? Um, it's got a, a minimum focal distance of 11 centimeters, 4.3. Yes, that's a one to two. So, which is really great. I mean, like I said, I use mine. I used the Tamron 28 to 75 yesterday in the wedding to get some close-ups of the rings and stuff, um, and things like that. Like, it's not true macro, but it's certainly workable in that scenario and detail of dresses and things like that. So, I've found that uh, it, it is a great feature. Um, I will hopefully get this lens uh, to take to the US with me. Um, Tamron Australia, I was talking to them the other day. When I, If you haven't seen the review, I did the uh, 24 and the 35. So check that out because I've actually um, done a review on those two lenses uh, and showed images from it and video and things like that. So I've given you know a real life review. Uh, so check that out. Um, but I'm meant to be getting, if it's here in time, uh, I'm hoping that I can take this to the US with me and I can review it uh, over the time that I'm, I'm away. 
This will probably be an amazing gimbal lens. Uh, I love the 24, but the 20 is even wider. So this being light, what's the weight of this? Are they saying it'll be light like the other lenses, I'm sure. Um, it's not saying, I can't see the oh, main features. Just let me see if it says in here. Enhanced close focusing capability. It's the 67 millimeter filter again, which I love because that's what all of my NDs are. Uh, superb high resolution, um, moisture resistant, so it'll have decent weatherproofing like what the other lenses had, and I showed that in that review. Uh, it's got all the coatings and everything else, and you also have the fast hybrid AF and the IAF. Um, so. I'm not sure it doesn't say, but it will be light. It'll be light because it's the 67mm uh, focal length and it's made of the same materials as the Tamron uh, lens is too, so, which is very durable uh, and really does weather incredibly well. Um, so hopefully I can do a proper review uh, with you and if, if I can get it to the US, well obviously if we have some meetups and stuff, you might be able to have a go at it to yourself to see if you like it. Um, because it's meant to arrive on January the 20th and whether you can get that at that date So I might have it over there with the US before uh, most of you have even had the chance to to have a look at it So stay tuned for that uh, when it comes out, but it looks like it's reasonably priced $350 uh, It'll be lightweight fantastic focal length uh, for gimbals I'm just interested to see though how it handles the noise in video autofocus because uh, the other two that I tested did were reasonably noisy. It didn't affect the performance, um, although I must say I don't think it focused as well as the 28 to 75. Um, it it still focused very very well for the price of what the lens was, but it, there was a bit of focusing noise that you could hear. So if you were using it for on camera uh, gimbal work with a microphone attached, it could potentially pick up that noise. So I'm dying to try this one out to see if it has uh, that same issue. So stay tuned. But um, if you wanted to save some money and you wanted some great travel lenses, these might be fantastic lenses that you could take because they're so light uh, and not expensive or not, you know, not really that expensive. So stay tuned for that. Uh, $350 uh, arrives on the 30th of January. Like I said, I'm hoping that I can take one with us uh, in the US. Um, let me go to the next story because I'm going to go on before we have Q&A because we're going to talk about the Sigma now. 33, 30. The next story too is interesting um, because uh, Sigma, there's rumours now that Sigma are going to announce the 70 to 200 millimeter in early 2020. Um, so this is quite interesting, isn't it? If you look at this. Um, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, look, Sigma have really woken up. Tamron have really woken up that, that there's Sony uh, E-mount now is a massive seller for them. Um, so they've uh, now realised that they want to produce the lenses as quickly as possible. We've just had the 2470. Uh, so obviously this is the next um, lens in that lineup. Uh, and they're saying down here that... Uh, the top, the same source who gave us the correct 2019 Sigma lens rumor told us that the next E-mount lens from Sigma will be the 70 to 200 f 2.8 FE. It will be announced in early 2020. Now, boy, if Sony, we have so much. I mean, how blessed are we now in Sony? Like, we've got multiple lenses from Tamron that we can use, uh, the, the holy trinity. When you talk, I'll just sort of talk generically, but when you look at the generic lenses uh, that were always there, is the 16 to 35, the 24 70, and the 70 to 200. So they're lenses that are there. Now we've got that with Tamron, we've got it with Sigma. Uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. So not only can we buy the GM lenses, uh, we can also buy lenses from Tamron, we can also buy lenses from Sigma. Uh, it, it's amazing and not only that we can also use third-party lenses like Canon or whatever else if we want to use adapters on the camera uh, we really are now starting to be really blessed with Sony that we have so much choice it really comes down now to how much money you have to spend what type of features the lens has uh, and the quality of the lens I mean if you look at the 2470 Sigma lens that that is incredible I mean that is an amazing lens uh, for the price and it's certainly now pushed the GM to being what I think is over is too expensive. I mean, if I had the money now and I really wanted a, a 2470, I think I'd buy this, if I wanted 2.8, by the way, I'm talking about. If I wanted a 2.8 lens, I'd probably buy the Sigma. Um, but I love the Tamron 28-75, so I love that. 
Uh, but we've got so much choice. Th this is the thing now. I mean, it's incredible. G'day, everything, man. Good to see you on here. Um, really enjoyed the show the other day, too. Uh, so, you know, it's it's brilliant. Like, I mean, obviously, this now, they're saying early uh, 2020, so we're not sure when this will be. It might be announced early 2020 and then released sort of mid-2020. But again, it's going to be another lens that is in the arsenal that we can use. And Sigma make fantastic lenses, built like tanks. They, they often are heavy, though. I mean, that's one thing. Uh, but great quality. So let me know what you think about that. Um, I'm going to keep going before we come to Q&A. Next one is this, uh, which with 36, oh, 36, 45. Uh, this is just one I wanted to show that we've got another 85 talking about lenses. Um, is it Takina? I can never remember how you pronounce it, but they've just released an 85 or leaked images of an 85 1.8 lens uh, as well uh, for 549 euro. Uh, the same, so I'm not sure what the uh, US price will be or the Australian price. Um, but, I mean, I'm not sure. Do we need another 85? Let me know what you think in the comments, uh, what you think there. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we've got that many now that uh, I'm not sure that we even need uh, another 85. I mean, I think the best value 85 on the market is the uh, Sony 85 1.8, which is a brilliant lens. It's not too expensive. Uh, great focus. Um, it's, you know, great quality, um, super sharp. So I'm not sure we need another 85, but I just wanted to show you that there is another one now that is rumored to be coming out uh, reasonably uh, soon. They're not showing whether this is manual focus or not, though. It doesn't say there. These are images of it. I'm just showing what it looks like on. Um, I've got a feeling it's probably gonna be manual focus. Yep, it's probably manual focus. So that's that one. Uh, and let me just switch over to this one because this is also interesting. Uh, 38, 15. I saw this was announced this morning on, uh, well, rumored to be announced, but apparently we're going to get another 0 0.95 lens. Uh, they're not saying what focal length this is though, and this is the interesting thing. So it's gonna be interesting to see what focal length this is. Uh, we know that they already have this uh, 50 mil 0.95, uh, and it's version three lens now that we're up to with that, and it's 7.99. It's actually a very good price for what you're getting. The quality of these lenses are pretty good. Um, they do tend to be a little bit soft on the edges. I have tested uh, the previous version, though not this one, so it might be a little bit better now. Um, but they are a little bit soft, but still you've got the option of, of having a 0 0.95 50mm if you need it. You can get this for the Canon RF, also the Nikon Z, and the Sony E-mount as well. But they're not saying what version of this we're going to get. Now we're still waiting on Sony. Uh, Sony did say that they want to produce some lens that is a really fast glass. Now we didn't know whether that's 0 0.95, whether it was an F1 or a 1.2 lens. I mean, I'd love Sony to make a, a say an 85 F1.2. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that, uh, that there is another 0 0.95 lens meant to be coming. Um, so stay tuned for news on that. Uh, and let's go to Q&A. and see what people are having to say. So let me scroll back a bit to where we were. Uh... <laughs> Fredomix says the handle is a joke, just a money grab from Sony. I'm not a big fan of it either, I, really. Uh, I think you're better off by a gimbal. Um... Where were we? Use it as a table tripod. It's an expensive tripod though. Um, Julian says, me too, love manual. Yep, you can't go wrong with manual. Langston says, have you tried auto ISO? Uh, yes, I have. Are oh, you talking to Julian there, um, Langston? Yep, yeah, I, like I said, I always set, because I usually set the camera up for Kiri. Um, she likes to have auto ISO and she's using aperture priority, and then she'll just adjust exposure compensation. Kerry is not technical. Kerry has a brilliant mind, 
or a brilliant artist eye. Uh, she really is incredible from the artist side, but she sucks in the technology side. She's not interested in it at all. And uh, it's quite funny because she said, David, I'm not interested. I've tried to teach her all, all about shooting manual and doing other things. She's not interested. Kerry just wants to shoot. Uh, so for Kerry, it's interesting. And, and half of the time she takes a shot and I just love what she does. And the eye she has is amazing. Uh, she's what I call a true artist. She's not from the technical side at all. Um, she just does the shot and gets perfect results. Uh, more about the emotion and things like that. So Kerry always uses auto ISO and she'll have it on aperture priority uh, and she'll just change her, um, her aperture or uh, the compensation to adjust, exposure compensation. Uh, I like to be, I'm the complete opposite. I like to be, I'm a bit of a uh, perfectionist and I like to be in full control of everything that's going on. Um, so I like to, to play around. I love the feeling of being able to control every aspect of the shot. For me, it's not about moving very, very quickly. It's, it's to take my time, get the exact result I want, and why I'm doing this, I'm also thinking about what I'm gonna be doing in the shoot as well. And that's what I've often said to people before. Brides always say to me, oh my God, we're moving on straight away because they've been in usual shoots where the photographer has just gone bang, 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 and they've taken 15 or 20 shots of the same thing and then whatever, moved on. I'll sort of do the settings that I need. I'm methodical, slow it, I slow it down. I'll do one or two shots and then move. And they can't believe it when they do that because other brides and bridesmaids have been in a lot of other weddings and they, they, they're sort of a bit taken back with what I do in that regard. But for me, I like to be in full control of everything. So I like to know what ISO I'm using and I like to know what shutter speed, what aperture I'm using, and I like to be in control of all of it. Um, and it's just something that I like to do. I, I, like I said, I, it's not that I don't trust it because I think auto ISO, like I've said with Kerry's, works really good. But I just like, I'm, I'm probably a little bit from the old school. I like to be in full control of everything that's going on. But that's me. I'm not saying that's the way you should shoot. That's the way that I shoot. Um, John said, auto ISO is great for wildlife and other fluid situations, not for everything. Uh, Langston said, been loving the 24 shots. Uh, that's from Julian. Um... Else I was saying hello. George said, is the drip, drip, drip of gear speculation just stampeding us all into advanced state of gas? Maybe. Uh, Fedemek says, Final Cut is gold. Yeah, I know. I love Final Cut. I'm the same with you. It's amazing. Aaron said, I agree, John, for auto ISO. Um, da Vinci is free. Yes, it is free. But I believe there's a bit of a learning curve with Da Vinci. I could be wrong, but... Uh, Rick, does, uh, Rick Tars says, would you use the new tripod thing as a Bluetooth remote uh, to remote start stop video? Uh, oh, thank you so much, Long Rider. Long Rider just gave me a donation. Um, where were we? I'll just put a mark here just so I know where to come back to, uh, just so I can show that. Thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate that. Um, where was I? Should have moved down now, I can't find it again. Let me quickly see if I can find where I was up to. Not sure, I might get back to it. Um, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> I'll just keep reading anyway. Uh, Julian wants the Sigma 35 1.2, lovely lens. Um, if Sigma drops to 70 to 200, I'm going to a strip club. <laughs> And make it rain. I love it. Eldrick. That's a classic. Um, that's really funny. Uh, the, everything man was here before. Thank you, mate. Good to see you in here. Um, Gerald says, I agree. Uh, David, I own Sony GM and G lenses plus a Sigma Art 24 70, uh, to 70 uh, f2.8, Sigma Art 70 f2 macro and the Tamron 17 to 28. In my kit, great choices now for many markets. I know it's amazing. Um, what else have we got? I know, Photomix has another 85mm lens yawn. I know, do we need another 85? That's the thing, I just don't know. Already too many 85s laugh out loud, I couldn't choose. Um, I mean, I've still got my Battis and I love it. I love the Battis. Uh, I've still got that and I've never felt the need to upgrade. 
so how about they innovate ABS to make a 95 1.8? Interesting. Um, Freeple says, yeah, I'm happy with the Sony 85 1.8. That's a great lens. The Sony 85 1.8 is a great lens. Um, if it ain't 1.4, it's out the door. I love it. 85 1.2 would be nice. Yes, now that would be nice. I'd love Sony to bring out something like that. Maybe Sigma is trying to beat Tamron with the 70 to 200 range lens. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the, uh, the Tamron 70 to 180 still interests me more, though, than the 70 to 200. Uh, that's the 70 to 180 Tamron lens. I can't wait to test it. I, I'm, I think that may be the one that I sell my 70 to 200 f4 for. Uh, I love the lenses being light for me. I just don't want to carry big honking lenses around much anymore, although I've got the 135. But um, I think I'm, I'm really excited to try the Tamron 70 to 180. So I can't wait to try that. Again, it's got that same 67 millimeter filter thread all the way through, which I love. Um, you know, so anyway, we'll have to see, but it, it certainly is going to be interesting to see how they both compare to one another, isn't it? How the Tamron will compare uh, to the Sigma. Um, Gerald says, one site said they think Tokina and the Viltrox 85 1.8 are the same lens. Maybe, Gerald, that could be a possibility. Um, seems like a totally unnecessary lens. Hero said 0 0.95, boys. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hope the new Sigma 70 to 200 will put downward pressure on Tamron 70 to 180. Well, you never know. Uh, but we don't know how they're going to be priced. But it's going to be interesting, isn't it, if they're priced sort of similar. It will be really interesting. Um, I would appreciate a thumbs up too, guys, if you could give me one. Uh, that does make a difference to the channel being seen. Uh, like I always say to everyone, we're not sponsored, so I would appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. Um... <laughs> John said, there's five people in the world who can effectively shoot 0 0.95. I'm not one of them. That one thing, though, John, you've got to understand too, though, is uh, it can be... I've used 0 0.95 before. I've used it when I had my GH5. Now, I suppose if you think in theory that's not a full-frame 0 0.95, it's probably a 0 0.1 or something. I, I don't know what it would be, 1.2. But but if you are far enough away, like, like for instance, if... And this is why one day I wouldn't mind one. Um, one day, if you say shooting in a really uh, dark uh, reception type environment, I've moved away often from using lighting at all. Uh, I try and capture the lighting as it is. Uh, and with the high ISO of the Sony cameras now, it's amazing how high you can bring up your ISO as long as you don't overexpose the image. Um, if you've got, say, a 0 0.95 lens and you are far enough away from the subject, everything is going to be in focus anyway. And, and this is the thing that you've got to understand. It's relative to how far away you are from your subject. So say, for instance, I wanted to uh, photograph a, a bridal party that was sitting on the bridal table and they were doing speeches and I was far enough back that that depth of field is no longer going to be an issue. But the benefit here is that I could open the lens up more to let more light in. So there is an advantage to having a 0 0.95 lens. If you're shooting close, yes. If you are shooting close, one eye can be out of focus and the, and the other eye will be out of focus. So that's something I totally understand. But for the way I shoot, sometimes it could be an advantage having a really, really fast lens if you're far enough away from the subject. But it's just a thought anyway. Um, G'day Ben, uh, good to see you in here, yeah it has been a while, a uh, long time no see, hope you're well, uh, where is the diner you'll be shooting at tomorrow, I'm not sure Ben, because um, the model's going to contact me, um, all I know is it's the other side of the city, that's all I know uh, at this stage, I've got to still find out the shooting details, all I know is it's, it's like an old fashioned type diner, uh, that we're going to be shooting in. Um, Tamron needs a 50mm. They will. Look, Tamron are definitely going to bring out other lenses. They'll probably bring out a really wide-angle lens. Uh, Prime, they'll probably bring out some longer lenses. Uh, it's only a matter of time now. Um, Langston says, I shoot 0 0.95 on a gimbal. Uh, sharp is for squares. <laughs> I love it. Um, soft images are retro. Exactly. Um, Tony might want to, uh, to uh, Tony might want to shoot 0 0.95 for another great bokeh 4K video. 
<laughs> I know what you're talking about there, Jamie. That's quite funny. Um, check Camera Conspiracy's video on it. That that was quite funny where he talked about Tony being out of focus. Um, put Vaseline on my 85 1.4 for more blur. Uh, Dave, uh, um, where were we? That good old soap opera look. Uh, did you just say she sucks? Yes, she does. Kerry, not that way. <laughs> Altric behave. Um, she hates, Kerry hates uh, technical stuff on the camera side of it. She's an artist. She does not like the technical side of it. That's quite funny. Um, David, do you know when the 70 to 200 is coming? No. All I know is I've been told that it probably won't be there before I come to the US. So I would not expect it uh, before sometime in February because I've been told it won't be there for me to use to, in the US. I don't think anyway, but that was the, the, when I last was told about that. Thank you so much for that donation, Long Rider. My wife is the same. Great compositional eye, but settings, forget it. Yep. Um... Kelb says, I think the A7S III doesn't have a flip-out screen similar to the ESR. I will dump Sony. Oh, you're saying if it doesn't have one and go Canon. Uh, if the ESR has 4K60, it's a pain in the ass dealing with Sony's crappy screen overall. Uh, yeah, and they also need a screen update too, don't they? Because uh, well, they've been using the same screen for a long time. But I wouldn't count on a flip-out screen. Um... Photomeic says, auto ISO are manual. If you're using a mirrorless and still fub up your exposures with natural light, you've got to be blind. <laughs> a stopover or understand is understandable, but uh, to be off by two to three stops, yeah, you should not be uh, over by that much exactly. Um, but what I'm finding, and the, I should do a video about it, because what I'm finding is that the exposure, the screen on the Sony uh, mirrorless cameras is... Uh, way underexposed. When I say way underexposed, I've actually set my camera at minus two in the EVF. Now the problem is if you set minus two in the LCD, you just can't see enough in bright daylight. So how I work now is I uh, I use, um, I've, I've still got to do some settings because there's other issues where I'm using ze uh, zebras or zebras as you'd like to call it, the US people. But I've got them at 95 plus, but that's not quite enough uh, but the reason why I've set uh, zebras at 95 is because uh, the log or, or when I'm using uh, the LUTs, it has to be set up that way because I'm using um, what they call, they're called uh, leaming LUTs. And the zebras have to be uh, set at 95 plus to get the right exposure if you're using log footage and stuff like that. Um, if I was doing... Uh, to get a proper exposure, I probably should be something like 100 plus or something like that. I need to experiment with zebras. But what I've been using more and more is just um, the histogram and making sure that the exposure, on the bottom of the Sony camera, you've got your exposure which shows a zero or plus or minus. I've been making sure that my exposure is say, uh, just say plus 0 0.5 and that tends to give me the exposure that I like. I've found on all of the cameras that I've got, uh, the Sony a7 III, I had it with the a7R, the a9, even the a9 II. If I look at the, uh, just look at the, say, the monitor for uh, exposure or correct exposure, it's underexposed around about a stop. It, it's, it was doing my head in because every time I'd bring, say, weddings into Lightroom, I'd have to adjust the exposure every single time to bring it up correctly. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get, a, say, around about 0.5 uh or just not clipping in the histogram, I'm taking it to the point where I can just see the, the highlights clip and then I'll bring it back. I need to try and work out uh, the zebras or zebras as you'd call it uh, to work out what that setting is. And it might be that that's 100 or 100 plus or 105 or something, I'm not sure, but um, I need to work out the zebra settings. But I know how I've done it now is I've got the EVF as minus two uh, and that will give me a more accurate look to what the exposure actually is if you're just using the EVF. And I'm using the back screen at uh, on sunny because I need to be able to see it in bright daylight. Here in Australia, the sun is very strong and very bright. 
um, so I've got it as sunny on the back screen so I can clearly see what's going on. Uh, and then I'll quickly look under the EVF to see what the real exposure is actually like. And that's the way that I'm tending to work. So I wish Sony would do something with their screens and that's the EVF and the LCD at the back. They need to be made brighter. Um, or they need, sorry, they need to be made duller. Uh, I've got to try and explain. They need to be more accurate to show what the exposure actually is. I shouldn't have to put minus two in the EVF to see what the correct exposure is. Because the interesting thing is, if I have the exposure even on normal, or the exposure on the LCD at the back on normal on the Sony cameras, and I expose to that, like I said, when I take it into Lightroom, it's underexposed. And it'd be interesting to see if you're finding the same thing, but, but this is what's happening for me, it's underexposed. So in other words, uh, those screens have to be dulled down uh, to allow it to be shown as more accurate. Now, I don't know what the answer is to that, whether you just do what I did and put minus two in the screens uh, and then use that as the guide uh, and work, say, having the EVF less than what the back screen is. If this makes sense, it might you might not understand what I'm saying, but um, I'd love to know if anyone else has other solutions about this underexposing problem that the Sony cameras have. If you just use the screen uh, to get your exposure, uh, because I'm finding it's just never correct. So I'm using more of the tools like the histogram and, and the, uh, you know, the zebras to get that correct. Um. <laughs> Aaron says he's so fast with all his shoots. Uh, Langston says if you're shooting in a fast moving environment, you don't have the luxury of setting adjustments. Um, yeah, I'm pretty quick at it though, Langston now. I mean, I'm very fast at being able to set uh, settings really quick. Remember too, <clears throat> that if you're going into a darker environment, it's very, very easy to just up your ISO. And look, the, the interesting thing is, I'll, I'll tell you one thing here, that um, Jervent, I've spoken about him before uh, with, um, he's, uh, I think in the top 10, he, he probably is in the top three wedding photographers in the world, uh, Jervent photography. Uh, he's moved over to the Canon ESR, but that's irrelevant. But I will tell you the way that he shoots. And if, if you want to check out Jervent, if you don't think I, I know what I'm talking about, check out Jervent's work. His work is unbelievable. Like I said, he's been voted in the top 10 for as long as I can remember. And like I said, I think he's probably the top two with Jerry Guionis and Jervent, probably uh, are the two top wedding photographers that are out there. Um, now, the way that he shoots, he sets his aperture now, now, he very rarely changes his aperture. He usually shoots everything at 5.6. Now, the reason why he says that is because he wants to show uh, the beauty of the venues. Now, he's a, a, a very expensive wedding photographer. Clearly, if you want Yervin's services, he he's, uh, lives in Melbourne, his studio's in Melbourne. But if you want his service, you've got to pay for his services. His brides are always stunning because they're always basically models, uh, everyone else. So his profile is very, very high. Um, he will always shoot at f5.6, and then he will set his uh, ex his um, shutter speed related to that to get a decent shutter speed. So in other words, you know, he might shoot if he had, uh, say, a, a 50 mil lens, or say if he was using a 35, he may shoot, say, with about 1 25th of a second in his uh, shutter speed. The only thing that he varies in his whole shoots is his ISO. So this is the interesting thing about how he works. So he would never use auto ISO, but he raises his ISO up or down according to what he needs from using that f5.6. So his variance or his variability is, is changing his ISO. And like I said, you can't criticize the way that he shoots because just look at his work and it's, it's outstanding, it's stunning. The detail that he gets in his shots, his lighting is always spot on, his posing is incredible uh, and he's one of the photographers that I really admire. So it's interesting to see how everyone works and how everyone works differently. Like I said, I can, if I need to work very quickly, I can change ISO, very uh, change the settings I can almost do it without even looking at the setting. I can look at the what's outside and know what settings I'm gonna use anyway. So I would pretty well know what I'm just gonna put in uh, anyway, and that's just from experience. Uh, so you'd be surprised how quick it can work if you want to go full manual. But like I said, yes, if I'm say running out from a church to outside, I then would start to use aperture priority or something like that, that, that you know, because I've only got a split second that I've got to change. But 
But you'd be surprised how quick, if we're in a normal model shoot or whatever, I can be changing settings to suit what's what's sort of available. But everyone's different. If you love uh, using auto ISO, yeah, go for it. I mean, like I said, everyone's different. Um, Aldrich said, um, I shoot plenty of weddings and I don't have the time to fundle with my exposure while things are happening. That's why I use auto ISO uh, and manual. Yeah. And like I said, that's totally understandable, um, Altric, what you're saying. Uh, where were we? Let's jump again. Uh, we were down here, that's right. Watching from Instabell, Instable, I've decided to buy the 28 to 75 over the Sigma 24 to 70 because of the weight. Yep, yeah, that's the reason why I would buy it too. Also, uh, although they both are close focusing, so yeah, that's not an issue. But yeah, I do love the weight; it's incredible. Um, Photomix says it doesn't matter what you use, Altric, as long as you get it right. That's exactly right. Um, remember, art is art, and cameras are cameras. Whichever way works for you, uh, you should be using. Aaron said the Tamron twenty-eight to seventy-five is one of my favourite lens to this day. Thumbs up done. Thank you, John. By the way, I shoot uh, mainly uh, landscapes and wildlife. 0 0.95 is not something I need. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, Photomix says, although I love the, that Nikon's put all the controls on the right side, shooting side, so I can easily adjust when I see my exposure, go haywire in the EVF without moving the camera from my eye. Um, Julian says, I just found out how to like a video while in the live chat. Thank you, Julian. Um, David, you are correct on the distance thing. Yeah, that's the difference that you've got to understand. Like people, someone asked me the other day, I shot an image of Kiara. You'll see it if, I, if you look at Facebook. Someone said the other day, why is Kiara and the background, if you're shooting 135, 1.8, why is the background in focus? And it's because I was a long way away. And that's the thing, it's the distance. Like if I moved up close to Chiari, the, the background would be blown. So having a wide open aperture, if you have distance between you, uh, it, it's uh, irrelevant because you no longer have that focal plane and everything is in focus within that plane. Um. Everything man said, where in the US are you headed? Uh, we're going to, um, we're starting off in Santa Monica. We're then going to Vegas. Uh, after Vegas, uh, well, we're starting in Santa Monica. We're doing some shoots in LA. We're going to Vegas for WPPI. I'm going three days before Vegas, and then we're staying for the whole of WPPI. Then we're going to travel through all of the Arizona desert. Um, and then we're going to go up to Yosemite and also up to uh, San Francisco, and then back to, uh, back to LA again. Uh... What's the latest on the animal donations? We got over to $8,000. I'm having problems though with GoFundMe. I, I, tried to tran uh, I tried to transfer the money or transfer the whole account over to, a, um, uh, over to Vets for Compassion here in Australia. The interesting thing is that once you hand over the rights to uh, that person, you can no longer control what goes on in, in the site. But for some reason, the charity accepted, uh, you have to send them an invitation. The charity accepted the invitation, uh, but something went wrong and they couldn't access the money. So I've now been trying to get onto GoFundMe to ask them how to solve this and it's going backwards and forwards and all, there's all this, now it's getting to the point where, where the charity has to send all of this proof over. I'm going, oh my God, it's becoming a nightmare to try and get the money out. So at the moment, it's just sitting in GoFundMe until we can work out some way of getting that money to the charity. And like I said, at the moment, I've lost control of it because I passed it over to Vets for Compassion. They're dying to get the money. Um, but there's, oh, I don't know, it's, I, I never realized that GoFundMe had that many issues. I think what the problem is, is there was quite a few scams in Australia with people using GoFundMe and stuff and then the money wasn't being put over to the appropriate charities. So whether that's got something to do with this, um, I'm not sure. But I can't even now, so now they've, they've escalated or something and I'm still waiting now uh, to hear back. So yeah, it's still happening, but hopefully it'll get sorted soon because I want the money to get out there. Um,
Aldrich said, the way I look at it, I get paid dollars for the camera. I'm not going to use everything that I can do with it. There's plenty of photographers that only use manual and the exposure is still off. Yep. Um, Langston says, I'm just happy to have a tool that lets me ride the ISO dial less when doing event shooting. Um, Hero said, true, I'm loving the Z50 with all the controls and the one side and the grip. Um, no, I didn't mean it that way. I, I just can't believe you said... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just laughing at it. Oh, that's a that's an Australian thing, Altrick. Uh, it's the way we talk over here. Um, I mean, it's not a derogatory word like that. It just means that she's not good at doing things like that. We just say you suck at it. That's that's what we say here. It's it's probably something you don't say in the US. Uh, yeah, it's something us Aussies say without even blinking an eye about it. Um, but I'm laughing now about what you're saying, yeah, because I took it the other way. Um, hey, everyone's worth saying. Hi, how are you? Hey, guys, anyone got an opinion on the best focusing system for video in the current mirrorless offerings? Uh, well, all of them are pretty good. I mean, I think the A9 and the A92 uh, and the A7R4 uh, are probably the best with the A74, A7, A7, uh, 6400 and the A6600 because they've got the real time tracking. Uh, the uh, Sony, I now believe, is better than Canon at auto focusing now. Um, uh, Fatamiak says The Everything Man, your conversation with David on the live stream is featured on my next upcoming video. I talk about how everyone clowned you for switching to Canon but I had your back. Well, so did I. Um, I don't blame him at all. That's what he wanted to do and good on him. Remember, a camera is exactly for what you want to use it for. It's a tool. Uh, you know, and I, I think people that slam people for switching cameras, it's crazy. Casper um, said, I'm going to Vegas just to be naughty. Um, what else have we got? David, how are the wildfires ending up? Well, they're still burning, Long Rider. Luckily, we've had um, some rain. We've had some rain over uh, in the New South Wales bushfires, I think, which have put out a few, but there's still plenty burning. In fact, we had a bushfire near us today. Uh, I haven't heard anything more, so it may have been put out. Um, they're going to look there. Uh, they I believe, over the next coming week, we're going to have a reasonable amount of rain, which is fantastic. So hopefully, that will put a dent in the fires that we've got burning at the moment. Um, but to be completely honest, our fire season hasn't even started yet really here where I live. We, we usually bat in February, March. So I would think that our bad season yet is still to come for where I live. Uh, that's still going to come. But hopefully the, the main fires that are burning now down um, on the New South Wales coast and the, the sort of uh, right to us in Victoria will be really almost, I shouldn't say put out, we're hoping that they, they really are held back in the coming days with the amount of rain uh, that we've got. Uh, so stay tuned. At the moment, though, uh, it looks like they're going to be better than what they were, but they're still saying that they will probably burn for, you know, a couple of months uh, in some way or another. Um, but, yeah, they definitely, at least we've had some rain over the coming days. I think Sydney yesterday had around about 100 mil, so that certainly has helped up that way. Um, you know, and it, it's good. So yes, the, it, hopefully we'll get a lot more though. Uh, Gerald said the difference in the gamma between Macs and PCs can make a difference. Yeah, you may be right, Gerald. That could be the uh, the difference actually. Um, what's that? You're a wanger. You're a wanger if you're not looking at the. Oh, where are we? I'm not sure what that meant. Where were we? Oh, your wanger out if you're not looking at, at the histogram. Um, his, uh, the everything mode I said just sub photo. Oh, that must be photo me out. Yep. Um, I'm not sure everything, man, it's done, but I have to get my sponsorship stuff done right before I release it. So probably within the next two weeks. 
Uh, here I said, so far I've tried the new Canon update, Sony update, and Nikon update, and for the AF, all of them are great. They are, and that's the thing nowadays, and we, we discussed this when I was with the Everything Man the other day, that um, the autofocus now on Canon, on Sony, on Nikon are all very good. Uh, Sony is still the best though. Look, there's no way of denying that Sony is not the best, it is. Uh, but the other brands now are really usable, so. Um. <laughs> To solve the screen problems, get the Z6. Uh, I know Sony A9, A92 is awesome. Uh, here's that. Uh, here's that here on David's channel. Um, what else have we got? Uh, jo uh, I'm not sure if it's Joel. That's the same way of photography in my area shoots, and I started doing the same, and it, and it does, it helps a lot to just move the ISO up and down. Yeah, that's why I say, uh, that's the way Yervant works, uh, just by raising his ISO. Uh, the ISO is that good now on these cameras that you can control that up and down. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it was interesting. I never thought about that when, until I spoke to him about it extensively. Uh, and it's it's interesting. Like I said, he very rarely shoots wide open. Often he's 5.6. Um. Ben said, uh, Fonzie's Diner and Fat Bob's Burgers both have that retro feel of neon lights, if you know. Now, thanks for that, Ben. Yeah, I'm not sure where it is that we're going. Um, stay tuned. It'll be, uh, I'll show it when I put the video up. Um. Langston says, for the record, it's not always on auto ISO, but shoot a lot of events and such where it's a real help because you have lots of lights changing while people are moving. Yeah, the, the problem with me, I've tried it before. The issue with me is I find that it affects the strobe. And, and this is the problem that um, it, because I want to be in control if I'm using lighting, auto ISO for me causes issues. Uh, and that's one big difference. Uh, now you may not be using much in lighting and that's what I'm not sure about, although I would think Altric will. But I find if I start to use auto ISO, I haven't got the full control because I like to uh, use TTL and manual and everything like that in my strobe work. It causes issues with that and that's one of the problems uh, that you get. Um, I just use a value with metering. It's just that's just what I'm using. Uh, yeah, I, I I never change it because being a mirrorless camera, I never ever need to change it because you see what you get. So yeah, that's what I use. Uh, sponsored by Squarespace. Um, shooting an antelope canyon with a changing light and in and out of shadow with that fleeting fractions of a second to make the shots. Auto ISO is a huge help. Um, and like I said. It'll be interesting to see how we both go, uh, Gerald, but I'll be certainly shooting manual, uh, ISO. Um, but we all do different things. That's the beauty of it. Kerry will be on auto everything. <laughs> uh, the greater the distance, the greater the depth of field, the closer the less depth of field. Yep. Um, Lesson, uh, Hero said, best lesson in depth of field was snap chick, like six years ago, I learned a lot. Uh, Enzo said, uh, you will love Yosmite, uh, David. We were there three weeks ago and our son uh, proposed to his girlfriend there. That's beautiful. Uh, congratulations, epic. I only had my 24 GM and my Sony A7 III. I wish I had my 16 to 35. Uh, someone just gave a donation. Let me just see. Julian, thank you so much, Julian. Really appreciate that. Um, where were we? Here. Langston says, uh, I mean, I'm happy. Um, GoFundMe is making sure people aren't getting scammed. Yeah, no, it might be that, Langston. It could be that people were getting scammed and they're being very, very careful about the, where the money goes. So I, hopefully I can fix it soon, though, because I want to get that money out to them. Uh, I didn't really want to... to the thing was, I didn't really want to, I could have d taken the money out and put it into my account and then transferred it over. But I thought, I don't really want to do that because it's, you'll always get the people saying I'm taking the money out for me and not transferring it over. That's why I wanted to transfer the rights over completely uh, to that charity organization. So that's what I did. But I didn't realize the second I did that, I lose control and I can't change anything after that. 
Uh, so that's now what I'm trying to sort out is why can't they access the money? Uh, but the, the problem is they have to deal through me and I then have to go through GoFundMe, which is asking me to get back to the charity. And it's, it's this awkward runaround that we're running around in circles at the moment. Um, so hopefully we can solve it soon. Um, I'm loving this ATM Mini. Absolutely love it. It's the best thing I've bought for what I do. Uh, Langston just got one recently too. It's brilliant. I, I love it. Yeah, I, I would say if you're into this sort of stuff or doing any of this type of work, that's one of the best things you can purchase for the money. John said, bugger all this, David. What the F is there? Go fund me. Uh, it was a charity I'd organised for the koalas being burnt here in Australia. Um... It's a tax issue. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe James. Um, that's why I uh, I don't I uh, donate to the charities Red Cross directly to make sure there's no scam. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to donate directly to someone because I didn't want to have it sort of vanish. So I've tried to give it to a charity that hasn't had much funds before that I definitely know that get out there and help people, and that's why I've tried to choose those. Um, People said, David, Yosemite is cool, but the Pine Park beetles have really done a number of uh, a number on the immense number of trees there. Yeah, I, I read that from someone else that they were having issues with those beetles. Um, Gerald said, yeah, join us on the Facebook group and share some of the photos. Yes, that'd be great. The link will be down below for the photography videography school. Um, John says, we say you suck all the time in the US. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, off very often and very loudly here in New York City. So it's not a bad thing for you either. Yeah. Um, a lot of trees are dead and dying because of that beetle. Oh, okay. Um, Z, the, uh, Z50 said, the Z50 is such a pleasure to use. My A6400 is in the closet permanently. Well, perhaps you should sell it. Um, if that, it does seem like it's a nice camera. Um, you suck here in the US means I love you, man. <laughs> I love it. I don't know if I trust a guy who makes, uh, his whole username, makes his whole username. I'm not sure what that meant. Uh, who is, uh, who all, who, so who's going to WPPI next month? Me. Woohoo! Can't wait. I'm getting so excited. We're only three weeks away before I'm out with you guys. Um, the Everything Man, uh, are the wireless go muffs any good? I haven't seen them in your video yet. I've ordered them. Uh, I've just got to wait. I think it said six weeks though to come. Up to six weeks. So I have ordered those wireless muffs. Langston says, oh, David, oh, so I never use it when I'm using a strobe in those cases. Yeah, it, it's, uh, that the problem is what I found that Auto ISO does is if you want full control, uh, full control over your, uh, exposure of, of say aperture and uh, flash exposure if you're on auto ISO the auto ISO stops you changing the settings and, and that's the problem so it stops you getting the exposure that you want uh, for when you're using off-camera flash so that's that's one reason why I never like to use it because I'm constantly using off-camera flash etc etc and I just want to work the same way the whole time so that my mind is in that frame of mind and I know no matter what I'm going to do that it's going to work the same every single time that I do it, whether I'm using flash, continuous light, or, or whatever. Um, so that was an issue that I was finding because I grabbed Kerry's camera and hers was on auto ISO and then I started to try and manipulate the flash and it wasn't changing and I'm going, what's going on here? Because it wasn't changing and then I clicked, it was because auto ISO was on. And that was obviously, the second I was trying to adjust anything, the ISO was uh, was balancing for the exposure. And that wasn't what I wanted because I wanted to basically uh, affect the ambient and the flash exposure at the same time. And I couldn't do that with auto ISO on. Um... Let me just see, because we're nearly at the end. It's just about coffee time for me. Raymond says, I'm confused. I came in here late and I see seven thumbs down. <laughs> I always get them. Um, I'll be watching everyone's live stream that are at WPPI and pretend that I'm there. I know we'll be able to live stream. Hopefully I can have a whole panel with a lot of the guys that you're seeing here. That'll be fun. 
Um, we'll be having meetups and stuff like that. Uh, Gerald says, I never use uh, ISO with Flash, or ISO. Uh, Langston says, me neither. Yeah, it's just like I said, for me, I like to work the same every single time. Uh, and that's about it. All right, guys, we're at the end of the show. Let me just come back to here. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Um, that's the end of today. Anyway, I'll be back on the Friday next week because I haven't got a wedding next Friday. So next Friday will be live. Uh, again, at the usual time or Thursday for you time in the US. Hopefully, we'll be back with Aaron on uh, Tuesday, your time in the US, Wednesday here. It just depends on how Aaron's going with um, all the earthquakes and power and stuff like that uh, over there. I I've said to Aaron, you let me know when you're ready. Um, so he'll let me know when uh, he can get back from Puerto Rico with all the issues that they're having there. So stay tuned for that. Like I did mention earlier, uh, I am doing a shoot tomorrow. It's a sort of a test for a workshop that's going to be coming up. Uh, we're doing a pin-up with the amazing Rebecca. You've seen her before where I did my Tamron lens reviews and things. Uh, she's gorgeous and she's made a whole pin-up outfit that we're going to do. And we're going to be in this retro uh, hamburger place. Uh, and that's where we're going to do the workshop in the coming days as well. So stay tuned for that workshop. And in the workshop, you, you'll, be losing, you'll be learning flash, posing, um, things like that. And also you'll have some amazing pin-up images that you'll be able to use for your portfolio. So stay tuned for that coming up in the coming days. Once I've done the workshop, I'll probably post it. And we're going to use that as the promotional uh, material for the workshop. So, so stay tuned uh, for that uh, as well. So thanks so much, everyone. And apart from that, I'll um, see you all in the next video. Uh, bye, everyone.